Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. Unlike the previous expansions, you are able to pre-purchase the upcoming World of Warcraft expansion Shadowlands, and if you're struggling to decide whether to buy it now or sooner to release and what the bonuses are to buying it now, well stick around because today we're going to be taking a look at the different additions you can purchase and if you should actually buy them now. At BlizzCon this year, when Shadowlands was announced after Ian gave us a cinematic, he then informed us that the new expansion was available for pre-purchase straight away. Now, this is the earliest you've been able to buy an expansion, but is it a little bit too soon? From what we've seen from BlizzCon, Shadowlands at the moment is physically one zone. We've seen artwork and videos on the other stuff. But within interviews and the QA panel, the game developers seem like they're a bit unsure or undecided on the things that are going into Shadowlands. Now, don't get me wrong, everything that's been announced seems very interesting, but let me ask you this question. Would you buy an unfinished game by another company? So the facts. If you pre-purchase Shadowlands today, and if you read the terms and conditions like I did, you'll see this. World of Warcraft Shadowlands expansion available on or before the 31st of December 2020, which means you could be waiting an entire year before being able to play it. However, if the last couple of expansions are anything to go by, then we should be looking at a kind of late August release, which still is a hefty nine months to wait. But with 8.3 still not being released, which is looking now like to be a new year release as I doubt they'll drop it around the holidays, there may be enough content to last us until the pre-launch. I personally think that Blizzard are in the mindset at the moment of a lot of players playing Classic to keep them interested, but with things going the way they are in World PvP, we might not be playing it for as long as they'd like, but that's a whole other topic for another video. So what do you get in the new World of Warcraft expansion, and what additions are there to buy? There are three editions that you're able to buy at the moment, with no collector's edition seen by at least me yet. However, if you guys do see any more about that, then please let me know in the comments below, because I do like a collector's edition. I'm looking to get this one as soon as possible, and I'm hoping for some sort of mini Helm of Domination or something like that. The first and cheapest edition is obviously the most basic, which comes to £34.99 on the EU store and $39.99 on the US store, pricing which I'll come back to in a little while because I might be able to save you a little bit of money there. The basic edition includes the expansion obviously, and early access to the Death Knights for the Allied Races and the Pandarans in Visions of the Nazoth. If you're not interested in boosting a character or getting some, I would say unique, but it's it's crap. I mean, items that have no use. Then this is the edition for you. The next edition, price-wise, would be the Heroic Edition. Now, this is a little like the Digital Deluxe Edition. Not only giving you anything you would get in the base edition, but also giving you the standard expansion mount, the Enscored Everworm which grants you the quest to unlock a special vestment of the Eternal Traveller transmog set. Now, as a mount, I'm a little bit disappointed. The mount itself, animation-wise, is best is based off the Cloud Serpents, if you look at the way it moves and the, special, the mount special that it has. It may feel better when the actual expansion comes out and there's a little bit of explanation behind the mount and where it comes from, but I'm not that impressed with it, really. The transmog set looks pretty cool. I'm currently using parts on it on my mage. However, the store forgets to tell you that you don't actually get it when you log in, as I found out when I went to the transmog and I tried to transmog my armor into it and it wasn't there. You actually have to earn the set. Now, I'm a little bit on the fence about that. Paying for it kind of makes me want to use it straight away, but earning it, I guess it gives you something to do, but to add insult to injury, you'd think that the quest would appear in your quest log when you first log in. However, this isn't the case. Now, before I carry on, yes, the store technically does explain the mount gives you the quest, but it doesn't actually explain what that means, so I don't feel dumb for taking about an hour to figure out how to earn it before giving up and looking on Wowhead. So, with that little disclaimer out of the way, I'll explain. The mount itself actually has an interactive orb on the back of it, and I'll put a picture of that up just showing what it is, because it is pretty hard to see if you don't know it's there. By clicking on that object, an NPC will spawn and offer you a quest. The quest will have you go off and kill random humanoid enemies to gather echoes of life. Now, four will drop pretty quickly, however, you have to gather 40, which doesn't seem like a massive number. Well, it might when you only get one or two whilst killing a hundred enemies. 
The task took me about two hours to do in one go. I had a Google before starting though because I thought, well, if Blizzard are going to make it hard to actually start the quest, then fuck me, it's going to be an annoying one to do. The best way that I found, and the actual way I did, was to go to the Bloodgate with a Brewmaster Monk in your group, remembering you can only do this in a maximum five-man group, and kill the continuous spawns of enemies until you complete it. Now, I'd suggest watching some of my other videos. Did you like that pug there? Or putting some music on, because you're going to be there for quite a while. I don't... Don't worry too much though, because thankfully you only need to do it once, as it is account unlocked. Is it worth it? I don't know, I guess that depends how much you like transmog. You also get a boost with the Heroic Edition, which is 420, which will start your character off in 380 item level gear, and will unlock World Quest, which is pretty useful to start off with. The problem I can see, and I know how they'll fix it, some people don't use their boost straight away, which is fine, since you might be playing an ult already and don't want to start another one yet. However, in Shadowlands, we already know that there's going to be a level squish to the max level of 60, so I'm kind of guessing, since I haven't actually seen this mentioned anywhere, that 120 boost will change into a level 50 boost, getting you ready for the next expansion. But there's always the possibility that Blizzard may tell you you have to use the boost before the next expansion comes out, or the boost may become invalid. It wouldn't surprise me. Now. We've come to, now we come to the Epic Edition. Can I just point out, I actually really enjoy the item upgrade system that they've used for the editions. It's a small detail, but man, it's effective. The Epic Edition gives you everything mentioned previously. However, alongside the Transmog set, you'll also get two other cosmetic items. One being the Eternal Traveler's effect for your Hearthstone, which if you've watched any of the new Star Trek films, I think, I'm, I think you like it. I, I, I think you'll like it. But you'll also get an illusion for your weapons called Wraith Trio, which I think is pretty awesome, and I'll put a picture up right here. You'll also be given 30 days of game time, which when you purchase by giving you an extra month to play. And for an extra $20, it seems a little bit disappointing, but I guess the game time takes most of that $20 up. So which edition will I buy? Well, I brought the Epic since it worked out time-wise to get it for my subscription, and I've been playing WoW a lot recently. I'm hoping when they bring out the Collector's Edition, they'll do what they do with Battle for Azeroth and refund you the digital purchase, and I'll feel like a bit of an idiot if they don't. If you feel like you have enough alts or don't want to boost them, plus cosmetics aren't your thing, then the base edition is perfectly fine. I like the fact that they're giving people the option to opt out for the boost for cheaper, as some people are on a budget, and since they have to pay a monthly subscription, then sometimes they can't fork out on 60 bucks every two years for a game. Which, if you play in the UK, then that's a uh, £120 a year anyway. God, my wallet cries when I say that. Do you need to buy it now? If you want to run around as an undead fluffy panda, then you don't have to buy it today, but you will need to buy it soon, as the allied race death knights are coming out in the new patch, so you'll be able to kill Nazoth by death gripping his adds with your panda claws. But if you can wait till the new expansion, then no, no you don't. How can I save money? I've always moaned about playing on the American servers while living in the UK since I have to wait for what feels like an eternity to load into Dalaran. However, it's all been worth it because if I were to play on the EU servers, I would have to pay £69.99 in pounds. However, playing on the American servers means I need the American edition and due to the exchange rate, I only paid £61, which saved me £9, which maybe not be a lot, but it is another month of subscription. So I kind of lucked out on all my hardship of playing with you Americans, and you know what? It's been worth it. And that's pretty much it. Let me know what edition you'll be buying in the comments below, and if you'll be buying it at all, I'd really like to know. I hope it's been a little bit helpful in helping you make your decision, and I will see you next time in another video.